Hey everybody, this is Josh, the 980 Know-It-All, coming to you today to talk about one of the topics that's really been discussed and kind of analyzed this off-season, and that is the idea of pitch clocks and mound visits to try and speed up the game. Now, first of all, I would say I'm more on the traditional side of, of, of baseball fandom, where I want the game to kind of stay the way it was, and granted, I do want things to change, because if it stays the same, it, it it's going to lose a generation of fans, and Baseball nor any sport can afford to do that. So I do I do understand change, and I'm not opposed to that. But when it comes to doing pitch clocks and mound visits and, and limiting some of those things, it bothers me a little bit. Now, I will say right off the bat, for minor league baseball, I am in favor of pitch clocks, and here's why. I used to be an intern for Salem-Kaiser Volcanoes, and I remember on multiple occasions going to a game and being there for four hours of a game. Now, four hours sounds great if it's a good, tight ball game, goes into extra innings. But I'm talking about a four hour game that was like five to two. Tell me how a four hours for a five to two game is right. Nine inning game, not, a, not an extra innings. So for me, pitch clocks in minor league baseball, I am all for it because those games, it's okay if they're a little bit faster, okay if they move, a bit, move along. Because there's a lot of things happening between innings, fans can be still active, having fun, and really it doesn't need to be a that, that four hour drawn out game. Now once again, most games don't last four hours, but there was multiple occasions in a single season in which a 90 inning game would go four hours. And so I'm okay with things speeding up a little bit at the minor league level because those games can drag on a little bit. The talent level isn't quite as sharp, so you'll have errors that slow games down, a lot of pitching changes, mound visits. Speeding up the minor league game is, is one thing, but we're talking about the major league game. This is the top level. These are guys who do things better than anyone else in the world. And I want them to be at their best at all times. Now, once again, do I want them just to stand there and drag the game out? No, I don't want that. But pitch clocks, I don't think, are the best answer to that. Um, just because it raises a lot of questions about... Um, you know, guys going to first and, and you know stepping off and make sure that their signals are correct because in Major League Baseball it really is playing for the championship. Every game matters. You know, some people say, well, games in in April don't matter as much as games in September. It's not true. Teams that have lost pennant races by one game, April games matter. So I think every game matters. That's important. But the mound visits is an interesting one because it's come out and said there's now a rule. And I'll emphasize that because I don't think it's actually a rule, I think it's just a suggestion, that there can only be six mound visits by a team where there isn't a pitching change. And the first thought that came to my head when I heard this is, what happens when a batter fouls the ball off and it drills the umpire in the mask and the catcher, out of courtesy for the umpire, walks out and does a mound visit? He has nothing to say to the pitcher. They're on the same page, things are going great, but the umpire just got rocked in the head, needs a second to catch his breath and gets refocused. Is that a mound visit? The catcher went to, the, went to the, the mound and talked to the pitcher. Does that count? And they're saying that if a shortstop runs in and, and talks to the, to the pitcher, that's a mound visit. And where I get it, because there are times which guys are visiting every pitch and that's annoying, I don't think that saying that six mound visits is the right thing to do. I think it's just frustrating. It puts a lot of pressure on the umpires. What happens when visit number seven happens? What do you do? And I, I don't think that's a good thing. I don't think that's thing, something that's, that's beneficial. Um, so I don't, I don't like that, even that notion of a rule. I, do I want things to speed up? Yes. And I want things to speed up because I, I don't want to be there. I have two young daughters, a five-year-old, one-year-old. So being there till 10, 11 o'clock at night for games is tough, but it actually leads into where my, my biggest change that I want to see happen with Major League Baseball, and even minor league baseball, is instead of having games start at 7 o'clock, start them a little earlier. And you can say all you want about, well, they want to make sure people get off work in time to get to the games. When I go to baseball games, I take the day off, or at least take the afternoon off. Now granted, I live two hours away from Seattle, so I have to take some time off to go up to watch a Mariner game. But even if I go to a minor league game, like, like the Hillsboro Hops, or Eugene Emeralds, or Salem-Kaiser Volcanoes, 
they're not in my hometown, so I gotta take time off for that as well. Or if I go on Saturday or Sunday, I go all day. I just go early. So I think the, the argument that they need to give time for people to get there, I don't necessarily like that argument. I don't think it works. So I think if they move the games earlier, that will solve actually a lot of problems. I think that will make it more family friendly. Once again, I have a five-year-old and a one-year-old. Going to a seven o'clock game, there's no chance because I put my youngest down to bed around seven o'clock. My oldest goes to bed 7.30, 8 o'clock. So am I gonna pay for tickets, go to two innings of a game and come home? And if it's out of town, not even be able to watch the game? So having earlier games I think is a better decision than trying to make mound visits or, or shriek the time of the game because really the issue is how late it goes and the easiest fix to that is start the game earlier. Start the game earlier, do more day games on Saturday and Sunday. I love going to day games, especially on like a Sunday. A one o'clock game is the best thing. I love it. You get, you get lunch, you go to the stadium, you just relax, it's warm, there's a nice breeze, especially in Seattle. Safeco Field on a Sunday afternoon in the summertime is amazing. Because it's warm, but you have a nice breeze, so you feel good about it. So my issue about timing for the games is not that it's too long, it's that it's too late. So if they can make the start times an hour, an hour and a half earlier, I already plan on taking time off to go to games. I already plan on leaving work two hours early and using some vacation time. And I know not everybody can do that, but a lot of people who go to games, they're able to do that. If they're able to afford the tickets, they're probably able to take an hour or two off of work. Weekends, most people don't work on weekends, so you have the opportunity to go up there earlier, to do earlier games. That's my suggestion because, once again, doing the mound visits limitation, I, I don't see how that's going to benefit anyone. That's just going to cause more problems. Pitching clocks, minor league baseball, all for it. Major league baseball, this is the top of the line. No, I want these guys to be at their best, to be focused, be on the same page. So that's my thoughts on pitch clock, mound visits, and really what the real issue is about the length of the game. And I'm Josh, the 90 Know It All. Don't forget to follow us by subscribing down below so that way you can catch all of our future videos. And if you agree with me or disagree with me, leave a comment down below so I know what everybody else is thinking. Because I want to know, am I the only person who thinks this way? Or am I, like everyone else, figuring out the issue that Major League Baseball just can't seem to do? Have a good day.